The greenhouse poinsettia business is a challenging industry where pests, in particular whitefly, can kill profits by damaging plants. Just the presence of whiteflies, even without damage, reduces the aesthetic value of plants offered for retail sale. Effective monitoring and diagnostic techniques for whiteflies through multiple stages of production will help you to optimize whitefly control and ensure your plants reach market in saleable condition. There are over 1,150 species of whitefly worldwide, with approximately 100 species in the United States and Canada. Two species of concern to poinsettia growers are Trialurodes vapororiorum, the greenhouse whitefly, and most significantly, the Mesia tabasi, also known as silverleaf, or sweet potato whitefly. The powdery white greenhouse whitefly adults are slightly larger than the yellowish Bamesia adults. Greenhouse whitefly wings tend to lie over the top of the abdomen, almost parallel to the leaf surface, while Bamesia wings are at a 45 degree angle close to their body. Greenhouse whitefly pupae are white with straight elevated sides and a fringe of wax filaments around the edge of the pupil case. Bambesia pupae are yellow with reddish colored eyes, oval in shape, and have fewer long waxy filaments. Accurate identification of these insects in your greenhouse will facilitate targeted biological control. All whitefly life stages occur on the underside of the leaf. Adults and immatures feed by sucking sap from plants. They excrete honeydew, a sugary liquid that accumulates onto the leaves below, promoting the growth of black sooty molds. This is most problematic when there is a high volume of whiteflies. Early assessment and identification of whitefly will help guide your control measures. While greenhouse whitefly come from outside or from other crops in the greenhouse, in Canada, Bamesia are most commonly brought in with new cuttings. For rooting stations or for growers rooting their own cuttings, observe the unrooted cuttings carefully for signs of whitefly when unpacking. In this greenhouse, we are rooting all of our unrooted cuttings. The cuttings come in from offshore. While we unpack them, we check each individual bag for any pests that may have traveled with the cutting from the producer. The problem with these pests is that even if it appears to be clean, Quite often there is eggs that we cannot possibly detect just by looking at the cuttings at the time the shipment arrives. These are unrooted cuttings just right out of the bag. So when you receive them, you will want to look at the underside of the leaves for any pests or diseases. So the white flies that you'll probably see are very small because it's the eggs and larvae. So you can use a hand lens to inspect uh, the, the underside of the leaves. For best results, hold the lens right up to your eye, as close as your sunglasses would be. Then, bring the object into focus by moving the object, not the hand lens. Use this method throughout all stages of production. Two weeks after the cuttings are stuck, inspect the cutting strips, turning them over to look for any signs of white fly life stages. So this it's the second most important monitoring period. The cuttings have been rooted for two weeks. By this time the mist has been turned off and the cuttings will be dry. Also the white flies will have been developing for another two weeks so they're bigger and easier to see. For each shipment of cuttings, check at least five to ten strips of each variety and more for the very popular varieties. Keep monitoring records of the percentage of strips in which any live whitefly are found. When receiving and unpacking rooted cuttings, observe them carefully for signs of whitefly. Check all varieties in each shipment. After transplant, do weekly monitoring of whole plants, turning random pots over looking for any signs of whitefly life stages on the underside of the leaves. Check all varieties and all pot sizes. Check at least 100 pots. 
keep records of the percentages of pots where white fly are seen. Yellow sticky traps can also be used to monitor adult white fly populations. One card per 1,000 to 2,000 square feet is adequate. This helps locate problem areas, but the traps can damage the white fly, making it difficult to identify the species. Too many cards may interfere with biocontrol by trapping parasitic wasps along with the white fly. As a poinsettia grower, your goal is to produce the best possible crop with the least amount of risk. The monitoring and diagnostic techniques presented in this video will help you better understand the extent of whitefly problems in your crop and allow you to determine the control measures required to produce a quality crop.